About how many referrals, inbound leads, whatever you want to call them, do you, do, do you and your team see per day or per week or per month? It certainly varies from day to day because we are, we are putting a lot of stock in the volume from our referral partners, right? So just for example, on the auto insurance side, when the COVID hit New York really bad, right? When that hit, the dealerships were shut down. Yes. So no one could buy a car. Yes. They, and, they, and the DMV was shut down, so no one could register a car. Mm. Even if they were buying from a family member, things were just shut down. So that hit us in April. So in April, we took a, we took a punch because you know, it had nothing to do with our ability or our strategy. It just had to be that our referral partners were essentially shut down. Yeah. You know? But on any given day, we've got, you know, let's say each, I mean, each person, I, you know, I've got one team member who could easily, I mean, it's just, it's normal that you know, she's getting 12 referrals in a day. That's oh, 12, that's so freaking that, great. That's, that's 12 quotes, right? With not one outgoing phone call to make it happen, right? And so that's what I'm talking about in terms of you have to hunt the, the geese. That's right? unbelievable, because, bro. Like, that's freaking crazy. I'm like, yeah, you know, and others might be getting two, three or four if based on how new they are and how long they've been doing yeah. it. But we talk about is that it's the snowball, right? You start right. off, you don't have the relationships. You haven't been doing this long enough. You know what I mean? You're, yeah, you're yeah. It's hard to fake that you're not really an expert sometimes yet. You take some time before sure. you're going to get that trust from people. But eventually you get one or two. I was talking to my team this morning, right? So I've got one team member, the one I just referenced to, you know, on any given day could easily get 12, right? Oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Right? And part of the reason why that's happened is because when she started a relationship with one organization, with one individual, that individual was so happy that he told his coworker, who told his coworker and coworker. And then before you know it, you've got eight people in this organization who all love us and yeah. they're all referring. So now you got, you know, it's eight people all from one company yes. referring to us. So it spreads, you do a good job, the word spreads. Just, well, like, it, just like it would if you're telling your family or, or friend, you know, hey, go get a quote, but it yeah. works on the, you know, on the institutional side of it as well. But most people are, most people hear 12 from, to inbound to one person, they're never going to believe it. But, and I can, I can use but because I'm, I'm, I'm meaning to erase what I just said because I've been in your office and I've seen it firsthand. Like you've, you've took their phone and showed me like, here's another one, you know? And I'm like, I, it, was, it was amazing to see, like it was fun. And that's, that's one of the reasons why um, people just need to, like that's why I love putting people like you on here uh, because people need to hear from people like JR that are doing big things that understand what's going on in the world, understand that insurance agents are struggling during, during insurance agents struggle in general. Yeah. They're struggling even more during this and, and it shouldn't be the case. Um, and someone like you has a message and a story that's really impressive. Uh, okay. I got a few more, I got a few more minutes. What, what, what's a, what's, what, what's, what's a, what's something or a couple things that, that you want to, if you're out there, talking to a new agent or someone that's considering insurance or, or someone that's struggling, maybe they're in one of those three buckets yeah. um, or they're in another bucket and they want to become an agency owner like you, you know, what, what's that look like? And, and, and what's some tips and feedback that you can give to, to those different people? Well, because insurance is a product that everyone has, right. It's, it's commonly referred to as a commodity, yes. right. And, and the, the average customer, that's how they think of it. It's all the same. Who's got the best price? So most of the conversations begin with the customer having that philosophy. Yeah. And so to be successful, whether it's growing your own agency, um, with teaching your agents below you uh, of how to, um, you know, what the sales process is and how those conversations go, it has to be designed to minimize the price factor, dissolve it as much as possible so that when you finally get to the price, because we eventually have to make an offer, they're thinking, damn, I thought it was going to be a lot more. Even if it is more than what yeah. they're currently paying. Yeah. We should be beefing up the value so much 
that the person's just happy you weren't double what they're currently paying. Yes. Right? And so you need to have the volume of opportunity. So you have to develop those relationships so you have people to speak with. And if you don't, then you just have to hit the phones, right? You're, you know, whether it's phones, it's social media and you know, relationships, or it's, you know, um, networking groups, you know, all of that sort of stuff to, to have people to speak with. And even if it's, you know, social gatherings at nights and sure. weekends, they all have insurance. They all have a roof over their head or most of them drive a car. So everyone's a, a potential client of referral source. There's no doubt about it. But once you have the opportunity, then it's just a matter of, well, what do you do with it? Yeah. Right. And the one thing that we cannot, we have no control over and, every, and agents have to have the right mindset with this is we have no control over what the price is going to be from the insurance carrier. No control. And we don't know what it is while we're talking to them up until the point where you press that calculate button. You don't know what number is going to come up. You might have a hint that it's going to be kind of bad if they say I had three accidents and you know all sure. of that sort of stuff. But you have no idea what the price is. And even if the price is terrible, if it's really high, it's all relative. So we may tell somebody, well, your your insurance is seven hundred dollars a month, and most people in the United States would say, are you kidding me? You should be riding a bicycle. Why would you spend seven hundred dollars on uh, insurance? Well, if the if that guy was spending eight hundred dollars a month with Geico before, then you just saved them a hundred bucks. Yeah. So now yeah. it's really, now it's a really good deal. So it's all relative, right? Totally. But, but what, what I talk to my team about is I, I, I have this thing where I call it, it's, it's the red zone, the yellow zone and the green zone. All right. When they give, when they run the quote and they're building the value the whole time, they press that calculate button. If the price comes up and we're hundreds of dollars more, right? It's in the red zone. It's okay. You're not going to make that sale. It ain't happening. Okay, move on. I don't want you dwelling on it. Oh my God, our rate stinks. Move on and set a date to follow up because maybe a claim falls off, a ticket falls off. We're, we're, but we're moving on. We're not going to make the sale today. It's not a good offer. Fine. Yeah. And on the, all the way on the other side, you got the green zone, which is we're less money. We're giving more coverage. This is a no brainer. 10 out of 10 should be sold. Right. Yeah. It's the yellow zone that I think separates. Um, the men from the boys, as they say, all right? All right, that's, it's the yellow zone. It's where maybe you're only $5 less or maybe you're $10 more. You're in the zone where if it's all based on price, they're, they're not looking to move, Yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, you know, well, what am I, what, why am I gonna go through this? Why am I gonna give all this information? Why do I have to deal with paperwork? You're not even really saving me that much anyway. Well, the only way that they're gonna do that is if, they, if they're thinking they're gonna get a huge upgrade, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, if you, if you drive uh, an average vehicle, let's just say it's a, a, a Toyota, and someone says, well, you can have a Mercedes and it's only, your payment's only going to be $10 more a month, then most people wouldn't make that leap. Yeah. Because they, why? Because it's a, such a huge upgrade. It's such a great value. So we have to win the yellow zone. So we concentrate on, all on winning the yellow zone, right? Which is when it's not blatantly obvious that they should be switching because we're just saving them a ton of money. How do you make sure that they perceive the value to be so great that they are hopping on that, you know, hopping on and, and, and giving us their business? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do something unique as we close out. Uh, there's going to be agency owner that listen to this that says, dude, I want one of my reps to get 240 inbound referrals a month. You know, uh, mm -hmm. is it okay if they email me, Cody at CodyAskins.com, and then I get the three of us on a three-way call. Yeah, of course. Okay. I, I want to do that just because there's going to be people that out there that need that, that maybe would like to spend an hour with you to really learn how, yeah. they, can, how they can use massive success in their agency and, and really ramp that up. Um, any thoughts there? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'd love to help out. I think that there's a lot of agents who are struggling with old school methods. I mean, and, and there's agents who crush it with the old school methods, but for the ones who aren't doing well with the old school methods, what I do might be a, a great uh, fix, yeah. you know, because it, it, it works for us. And in, in my belief, and I know my team agrees with me, they much prefer have spending their day, um, stressed out about getting to all the quotes they have to do rather than stressed out about where am I going to get my next quote? Yeah. That's unbelievable. You know what I mean? 
That's all. Awesome. So, it, you know, for, so for an agent that says, you know, I don't want to make 300 calls a day, that makes me miserable. I'm going to burn out. I hate it, but I yeah. still want other ways of getting business. Then I got no problem getting on a call with you and someone else and kind of talking detail, a little bit more details of, you know, about how we get that done. Yes. Yes. Awesome, buddy. Thank you very much. That's huge. Okay. So if you're out there, if you're the agency owner out there and you're like, man, this JR dude is freaking too legit to quit. And I got to meet this guy, you know, um, email me, Cody, Cody Askins. I'll set up a call. I'll even jump on it just because this dude is a machine. Uh, dude, you are doing bigger things than you realize. You've got an incredible team. You're an amazing dude. Thanks, uh, man. And thank you for, for spending some time with us and sharing all the secrets of why insurance is a good career path, how you can launch your career, and how you can scale an agency. Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food? I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that. Grab the books. See you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,